Hi y'all, I hope you and your loved ones are doing as well as can be today. So today I thought I'd do a video about some activities to do while bed bound. Taking the good with the ups and downs I want to see how the world turns round Let's go adventure in the deep blue sea for about nine years now due to chronic diseases such as POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, mycotoxin disease, degenerative disc disease, a spinal cord injury, osteoarthritis, and EDS, which stands for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, just to name a few. So uh, lately I've been even more bed bound with an infection and with a flare up. So since I've been spending so much time in bed, I thought why not do a video about some activities to do well, bed bound. I spend the majority of my time in bed and I am always occupied unless of course I'm sleeping. I always have something to do so I thought I would share some of the things I'd like to do as well as some other ideas for other things that I don't do but maybe you guys would like to do while you're stuck in bed. If you guys like this video please 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 give your girl a like that really really helps me out and if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to follow my chronic illness journey and to see more videos like this Hit the bell for notifications on when I post new videos. I try to post once or twice a week, but lately I've been more sick and flared up, so I haven't been posting as regularly, but I promise I will post as often as I can. Okay, so some of the things I like to do when I'm in bed, other than scrolling through my Instagram feed and writing blog posts and things about my life with chronic illness are reading. I love to read. Because of my severe brain fog, I'm not able to read as often as I used to or as often as I'd like to, but I try to read a little bit here and there. Short novels or, you know, poetry is really good to read. And I like everything from fiction to nonfiction, uh, autobiographies, but those could be long. There's all kinds of stuff out there to read, and uh, there are a lot of short, shorter novels. One author I would recommend is Max Lucado. If you're Christian, he is a great author. Uh, his books are generally shorter, which is good for people like me who have brain fog and can't read long, lengthy books. So check out Max Lucado if you haven't already. His books are really, really good and heartwarming, inspirational. So reading is a good activity to do in bed as well as writing. I like to write, like I said, about what I go through and, you know, blog posts and stuff like that. Gratitude journaling. I, I do gratitude journaling as often as I can where I just write down a few things I'm grateful for each day. And that really helps to keep me grounded and to remind me of all the things that are still going right and the, and the things that I have to be grateful for and to be thankful for, to be positive about to be looking forward to in the next day. These are things that it's all really important to keep focused on, the things that are going good in our lives, not the things that are going wrong and things that are, you know, bothering us. So I try to stay focused on that by gratitude journaling. Other ways to journal are bullet journaling. I know that's really popular. I actually just ordered a bullet journal, so I'm gonna get into that soon when that comes and I'm really excited. I'll probably do a video about making my bullet journal, so stay tuned for that. So bullet journaling, gratitude journaling, you could do a symptom tracker journal where you write down all of the things that you ate in the day, the activities you did, the hours that you slept, and write down the symptoms that you had that day to see if you could keep track of anything that's maybe provoking your symptoms or triggering your symptoms, like a food, or a certain amount of sleep that you haven't gotten or that you need, you know, something like that. So you can keep a symptom tracker journal. Let's see what else. You could write poetry. You could write short stories. You could write to a pen pal. That's always really fun. Um, you could find someone that you're friends with online and just write back and forth to them. And um, you could write greeting cards for, for friends and for fellow warriors. That's something that I've been doing. Let's see, there's puzzles, there's crossword puzzles. I'm a big crossword puzzle nerd. So that's something I like to do. It's a good way to keep your brain active and kind of like a good exercise for your brain muscles. There's crossword puzzles, there's also jigsaw puzzles. 
and all kinds of puzzles like Sudoku and games online that you could do. Arts and crafts, you could get really crafty and you can scrapbook or do things like that. But scrapbooking is really fun for paint, you could draw or sketch. Uh, and remember, this is, even if you're not good, this is just for your entertainment. You're not going to have to show anybody your paintings if you're not a good artist. Don't worry about that. Just do it for fun. I'm actually going to show you the painting that I did last night. I named her Louisa. This is Louisa, guys. My little sheep friend. I'm not the best painter, but I have fun with it. This is watercolor, and I usually don't do watercolor, so... You can knit, you can cross stitch or sew, or sew, is it sew? I think it's sew, I always say sew, I never had to say that, sew, 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 sew. You can sew or cross stitch or knit. I actually have never cross stitched or knitted or anything like that, but that's something I've been thinking about doing. Uh, I do have osteoarthritis in my hands, so things with my hands are not always the best things to do for me, but on the days that I am able to do that stuff, I try to because it's important to keep your hands and your body as active as you can. Even if you're not able to move much, just move as much as you can. It's important so you don't atrophy or get worse, which does happen, especially if you spend a lot of time in bed not moving. You can pray. I always like to spend as much time as I can praying, connecting to God. And there's no outline or guideline that you have to follow. Just speak your heart, pour your heart out to the Lord. Uh, you can meditate if that's more your thing. Uh, you could spend hours meditating and just kind of zoning out and relaxing. You could stretch. Gentle stretching, once again, is really good to keep the body fluid and to keep the body uh, not so stiff like it tends to get when you're stuck in bed all day. Oop, there goes my uh, EDS cracks. You can listen to music. That's always a really good thing to do to lift up the spirits, uh, especially if you're used to just being in bed all day and you're just feeling like really blah. You can put some good uplifting songs on and just dance in bed if you're able to or just put your headphones on and sit back and listen to some relaxing music if that's more your thing. So you can connect with your friends, especially your sick friends and your spoony friends, which basically it's the same thing for those that didn't know um, and keep them in the know that you if you're not able to talk or reach out just let them know hey I've been really sick so I'm sorry I haven't been able to reach out just so that they don't worry about you I know I get into this problem a lot where I'm so sick or feeling so bad that I just don't feel like talking to anybody and I have all these texts that I'm basically just neglecting so I have to be better about that, about letting people know that, hey, I'm just not able to reach out right now or to connect to talk much right now. I'm, I'm just dealing with a lot. So that's always good to let your friends know what's going on. And also just to keep yourself busy. Just talk to them, text them. You know, it's always good to have someone to vent to, to reach out to when there's no one else to talk to, uh, especially when you're going through a hard time and you're stuck in bed. Okay, this kind of go, goes back to the writing and bullet journaling thing because it kind of goes under both of those categories, but you can write out a menu or a meal plan. I love to do this so that I keep track of what I eat and, that I, and so that I stay on top of healthy eating. I just kind of write up a menu for the week of ideas of foods that I would like to eat or recipes that I would like to make or have someone make for me. I try to keep it healthy, like I said, and I try to keep writing recipes that I know I'm going to want to eat because it's going to be futile if you write down recipes that are really healthy and that you want to eat but then you don't actually look forward to eating and you don't want to eat. So make sure it's healthy but delicious. Pinterest is a great place to look for healthy recipes as well as arts and crafts and other ideas for things to do when you're stuck in bed. Snuggle with a pet. That's always a great thing to do if you're lucky enough to have a pet. Snuggle with your pet because pets give a lot of comfort and are proven to be therapeutic for people who are sick or sad or just in need of some comfort. So I have my cat Ann Perkins who I love to snuggle with when I'm feeling bad and generally pets know when you're feeling bad and they'll come to you and if you don't have a pet that likes to snuggle then just play with your pet or even if you can only spend 5 to 15 minutes playing with your pet in bed with a string or a toy that's something that will occupy you and your pet. <laughs> Learn a new language. So download a free app like Duolingo where you can learn a new language that you've always wanted to learn. I am a Portuguese speaker because my mom is Brazilian, but I have always wanted to be fluent. I haven't been fluent in Portuguese 
probably since I was little, since I was there in Brazil. So I have to get back onto Duolingo and practice my Portuguese. I haven't done this in a while because I just felt like it takes too much energy, but I'm gonna push myself to do that because I think it will actually help me sleep more. Now you're probably wondering, what does learning a new language have to do with sleep, right? Well, my sleeping habits have not been so good lately. No matter how tired I am, my symptoms have been keeping me awake since I've been flared up. So for those of you that don't know pain somnia, it is a real thing. And what I've been trying to do to combat my pain somnia is before bed, I try to spend as much time as I can, at least an hour, doing something that takes mental energy. This will make me even more tired. It will make me so tired that I just cannot stay awake. So if I spend an hour reading or learning a new language, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of concentration. So this will help my body and my brain to get more tired and more ready for sleep. So I suggest learning a new language or doing an activity that takes mental energy before bed. That might be helpful for you. I'm still working on this. It's something that takes practice. Um, it generally does help me when I'm able to do it or when I have the energy to do it. I have this up before my cat tries to interrupt. <clears throat> all right guys these are all the tips i have for today i hope that they're helpful and if you have any tips for what to do while stuck in bed please share them down below i would love to hear them all right this is all for today take care guys i love you to pieces bye